Hello everyone. It's week two of the Nature Prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. And the challenge for this week is to do something with flowers and leaves. You can either use dried um, flowers and leaves like I've got here, or you can paint them. You can interpret this in any way you like. Um, and of course, you know, fit it to suit any season that you might happen to be in. Um, we're in our spring season here in the UK, and these are my latest specimens. I dried these um, about two or three weeks ago. These are beautiful snow drops from my garden aren't they pretty let me just show you one of these close up i think they're absolutely gorgeous so i want to try and do something with some of these um, these are all of the ones whoops i've dropped them these are some of the ones that i pressed last year i've got all sorts here some daisies i've got some lovely um, leaves here to play with as well um, but you know these are so beautiful and it's a shame not to use them up so let me just show you some of the things that um, that i've got Aren't these gorgeous? And I do find with drying flowers that um, some of them keep their vibrancy better than others. That one's absolutely gorgeous. Some lovely buttercups um, here. So I'm just going to try and do something with some of these. Now I keep my flowers separate. These are all the spring ones that I collected. Um, most of these were collected and pressed um, last year. Um, but I do also have um, an autumn collection as well. That one's gorgeous. That's just um, lovely. Um, and I do try and keep them separate just so that I know what, what's what's what. Um, so, as I've said, these are all of my, my spring specimens. And then I've got all of my autumn ones. I'll show you them in a second um, in a tin. You see, I want to do something with these. These are gorgeous dog roses, um, I think. Um, you know, some of them in bud there. Aren't they pretty? Just too nice not to use. Now, many of you will know that I've shared lots of ideas for using dried flowers in projects on my YouTube channel. And I will leave a link to the playlist in the description box um, below because there's lots of the useful information um, there's a quick way as well so that you can dry your flowers instantly for those of you that um, haven't got any to hand and want to give this um, a try so you know do check um, my playlist out now, I've also got a tin full of leaves and flowers and these are mainly autumnal ones um, just love the colors of these as well so you know just some beautiful beautiful specimens look at these ones here these are just absolutely gorgeous look at the colours um, in those and I just keep them in baking parchment just to stop them breaking because obviously they're really delicate just some lavenders and heathers and things in there look at this one look at the colours of, of those absolutely beautiful um, and some gorgeous fuchsia I knew, knew I had some fuchsia um, somewhere so I might try and do something with these as well and then I think I've got a few older spring ones um, dotted around as well now these ones here are really nice and flat and I'm going to try laminating them. I've got here um, a laminating pouch. This is an A4 laminating pouch and I'm just going to try and arrange some of these on the acetate, just spacing them um, out just so that I can cut them apart um, afterwards. And these ones here, I think I want um, two together. I think those two colours there are just absolutely gorgeous. How do I want those two? to go I think like that we'll have that one there and again I can just um, take all of these extra bits off in fact the best way to do that I think would be using um, a paintbrush I want to keep these fairly fairly crisp and clear um, I think that's a nice one that one there space them about a little a little bit more, I think. This is fiddly work, guys. Fiddly work. And we've got, we might as well put um, a few more on as well. Just to use up the whole of that, um, that sheet. Maybe we can have two together um, again here. Perhaps. Oh, there we go. That's, um, that's pretty. I didn't realise that was... Um, that was a blue one. Can I use this one, this one here as well, perhaps? No, I like that one there on its own. So let me just wipe off any extra bits and pieces that, um, that I don't want. And then I'm just going to close, close that carefully just to keep them in place. 
just check that I've got them where, where I want them. I think I'm happy with that. Um, now, let me just move these bits and pieces out of the way. I have my laminator here to my right hand side and it's been heating um, up for a little while. So this is mine, just um, a cheap, cheap laminator, cheap A4 laminator. And I'm just going to feed that pouch through the machine. So putting it in at the sealed end. Have I got some, um, is that a hair I've got in there? No, I don't think so. So I'm just going to feed it, feed it right through. Keep your fingers crossed. Now those have come out really well, but you can see that the paper's a bit wonky. What I'm going to do now is just feed it in again in the opposite direction. So I fed it in that way. I'm just going to turn it over and feed it in the other way and hope that that will straighten, straighten it out. And that's worked. That's come out really pretty, nice and nice and flat. I'm pleased with them with that. So let me just pop it to one side. And then what I'm thinking is that I can cut um, these up. So I'm just going to take it off to my paper trimmer and cut it into six equal pieces. Just look how gorgeous these are. I'm so pleased with these. I've trimmed them down um, and I've also rounded the corners as well. I've just used my X cut corner rounder. But just look how beautiful they are. I love these. Now I've used matte laminating pouch. Mine are the Deskit brand. I got these on Amazon. Um, mine are the extra 250 microns, um, so they're quite thick. Now, my machine does say that you can only use um, maximum 80 microns, but it's gone through this machine absolutely fine. I've also got um, an A3 um, laminator as well, and these pouches work just as well in that as well. Um, but, you know, just, just beware. Make sure you get the right microns um, when, when you're looking. I just obviously didn't look at the, the, the package. Now I want to turn one of these into a little tag. I think I'll, I'll do this one here. Let me just grab my, oh we've got loads of bits um, in this, let me just grab my crocodile. Let's get rid of all the fluff that's in the hole. Hang on so that I can actually see where, where I'm punching and I'm just going to eyeball it about, about there. That looks fairly central to me. And I'm just going to grab an eyelet using one of the We Are Memory Keepers eyelets. So pop that in and just uh, crunch it, crunch it down. Oh, hang on, where's it gone? I've lost it. It doesn't want to go, it doesn't want to go in. Carefully give it um, a squeeze. And there we go, isn't that just so pretty? I think I'll just use some garden twine just to go through through this, carrying on with that rustic um, look. In fact, I could probably get away with them um, using half of that. I'm going to cut it in half instead of uh, wasting it. Let's do this. Here we go. Let's use the slightly, slightly longer piece. And you know, these popped into your journals, I think would look really cute or attached to gifts and happy mail and all of that kind of uh, good stuff. I just love that. Now you can sew around laminating pouches as well. I took this one off to the sewing machine, but I wouldn't recommend it with the matte um, laminating pouches. If I tilt this, I don't know whether you can see, we've got tram lines, it's scratched um, the coating. There's obviously some kind of matte coating um, on this and the sewing machine foot has left tram lines. So that just doesn't work for me. I don't think you'd have that problem if you were using the clear ones to try and make a tag with this. Of course you could have it as a card um, if you wanted to but I want to cut a circle out of this. I folded a piece of craft cardstock in half and cut it roughly to about the size that um, I want it and what I want to do now in fact I'm going to be better off doing this um, on the on the back. Now how do I want this? That will be the top. Yeah there we go. I'm going to draw around this tag and use it as a template. I want to centralise it and make sure that I've got that straight. I think that will that will do. And I'm just going to draw around the outside like this. And then I want to just mark a centimetre border. Let's have a look. So centimeter there to draw another mark and I'm going to do this all the way around 
Now that I've made my marks, I'm just going to draw a line again. I just want to make sure that um, I've got that straight. I'm just eyeballing it. There we go. We can rub these pencil marks out um, afterwards. So this will give me a guide as to where I need to cut because what I want to do is cut the centre part out. Just make sure that that's straight. We'll have a look at it after I've drawn these lines and make any adjustments as as necessary but I think that should be okay yeah that looks um pretty pretty good to me I think um, and then I'm just going to use a craft knife to cut out that central central part as accurately as I can it doesn't have to be perfect I've got um, an idea for tidying it up if it's not quite not quite spot on go through it a couple of times just to make sure that you've actually gone through your card yeah I can feel that I've gone through now and I'm just going to go all the way around now we're there or thereabouts I'm just going to use a small pair of scissors just to snip the corners there we go that should uh, there we go we'll just pull pull these off do it as, as best as you can there we go and then what I want to do is fold that over and use that hole there to mark the other side of the, the card like this. And again, I'm just going to cut this part out as well. See, now we've got our window, but it's a bit shabby in places. All I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm just going to rough it up a bit so that it looks as if it was meant to be like that. You could of course sand it using an emery board if you want to but I just think this is a much nicer nicer look. That's what it looks like now. So it looks as if it was meant to be that way and I'm just going to ink around the edges and I'm just going to use some frayed burlap distress ink to, to do that. So I'm just going to go all the way around the insides on both both pieces. Just to frame it. That looks cool. I'll do the same on this side um, here as well. Then choose whichever side you like the look of best. And then you just need to glue the card in. And all I'm going to do is just apply a really small amount of Fabri-Tac. Oh, in fact, I'm using three in one all around the outside. It's probably easier to do it to the to the card. So we just apply a small bead all the way around like, like this, making sure that you keep it to the very, very edge. And then we can just, just glue it down. Just make sure you get it nice and nice and central like that. And then we can just glue the brown cardstock shut as well. I'm just going to weight this down underneath a heavy book. And of course, as soon as your glue has grabbed, you need to seal the inside as well. In fact, what I'll do is I'll do it on this side, this side here. Just make sure that you get plenty of glue right to the very, very edges like this. And I've just um, done the same as well with the one that I'd sewn around that I didn't care for. So, you know, save that one going to waste. Those dry on these. So I'm just going to turn them into a couple of tags, cut one corner off there, um, and then just take it over to the other side then, just so that they're, they're even. Has that come off the right way? Yes. Just line it up and then we can use that as a template just to trim the other side like that and then we can use the template for this one here as well I think these have both turned out absolutely fabulous I've just popped an eyelet and some more um, twine through them and those are finished um, of course, if you've got a die cutting machine and you've got some kind of nesting rectangle um, die, it would be absolutely perfect. You could whiz these up in, um, in minutes.
The other idea I had was using tea bags. Um, I've just pulled out a, a few different um, tea bags here. I've got this Tetley tea bag here, a round one. I've just popped that little daisy, or rather large daisy. Um, the dog rose is going on this square one here. Um, I've also got some of these um, longer tea bags, and I've just opened it out, tipped the tea leaves out, and I've cut this one um, in half. Well, not quite half but you see what I mean and so I'm just going to pop this underneath now and arrange these and pop these through the laminator as well and let's see what these look like. I've cut these ones apart and I must admit I think these are going to look better if they're put um, in cards um, so that's what these look like. I don't like the border around the outside. I think the plain ones are just so much nicer, crisper, clearer. I think that's what um, what I think. So I will turn these into cards at some stage um, as well. I did also run the snowdrops through the laminator. I think these are absolutely beautiful. I think these are my favourite um, of all of them. Just look how gorgeous they are. Just love these. So I've turned that one into a tag. Um, I've left these two um, as they are. I don't know what I will do with these um, as yet if anybody has any ideas you know do uh, please feel free to share but you know I just think these are gorgeous just a great way to preserve your dried flowers and leaves I also decided to try a clear laminating pouch. Now, this is a much thinner pouch. It was one of the ones that came with um, my laminator. I don't think the look is anywhere near as good. For one, because it's thinner, um, it's much more bendy. It's melted in parts. Um, I don't know whether you can see it, but on one of these, you can see where... Um, oh, here we go, on this one here, where it's kind of buckled and um, not done a particularly good job. You don't get that with the thicker Micron pouches. Um, you know, just my opinion, I think this is much nicer. Um, but if you want to sew around the edges, the clear ones definitely lend themselves better to sewing. So, you know, I've sewn around um, three of these and, you know, I do like them. I just prefer the matte finish. Let me know what you think. I really hope that this has given you some ideas as to how you can use fresh flowers, fresh pressed flowers in your own projects. I can't wait to use these in my journals. As I said at the beginning of the video, I've got lots more ideas as well as to how you can use pressed flowers in some really simple and easy ways. So I'll leave the link to the playlist in the description box below for anybody who's interested. But if you've enjoyed today's video, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. As I always say, it just really does let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing do let me know what you think in the comments below if you've got any tips and tricks you know I'd always love to hear them but most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon and don't forget to go and check out Kylie's video this week as well because no doubt she's come up with a completely different interpretation um, on this prompt to what I've done here and for anybody who's interested in following along with us I'll leave the link to the Facebook group the Mixed Media Emporium in the description box below just please be aware that there are are four entry questions um, that you will need to answer to join and if you don't answer them um, your request will be automatically declined um, but as I've said take care everyone I'll see you all again soon bye for now